Our next presenter lives in the future. Well, not, okay, not really in the future, but as a consumer futurist, he is all about looking ahead. Ido Leffler is the co-founder of Yes2 Incorporated and Yubi. Now, Yubi is sold exclusively at Target stores nationwide in the U.S., and for every Yubi item that's purchased, the company distributes, uh, distributes an item to a classroom in need here in the United States. And this year, UB aims to impact more than 30,000 classrooms with the goal of changing the lives of over 750,000 children. Ido is also co-founder and, uh, I love this, chief carrot lover. Maybe he has a chief celery lover, lover uh, next to him. Uh, of the San Francisco-based Yes2 Inc. And this is one of the leading natural beauty brands in the world. Uh, a portion of Yes2 sales goes to provide 50,000 meals to kids around the globe. Ido co-authored Get Big Fast and Do More Good, which has uh, received accolades from Time, from Entrepreneur, Forbes, and Success Magazine, among others. And Get Big Fast and Do More Good was named a top five business book of 2014 by 1-800-CEOreads.com. So here to continue to explore the theme of prosper by being a mission-driven company, please welcome to the stage Ido Leffler. Oh. Hi. How's it going? Good? Well, um, wow, I'm usually when you're the last or one of the last speakers on stage, there's like 10 people left in the room. So uh, thank you for staying. Um, uh, it's, wow, I'm looking at this shirt. This is the first time I've ever worn this shirt on stage and it looks like I'm more like your magician than I am your presenter. Um, but, so hi guys, my name's Ido Leffler, as um, I was just introduced. Um, first and foremost, I'm husband to Ronit and father of three little monkeys, a six-year-old, a three-year-old, and a six-month-old, three girls. Um, I live in Marin County, just outside of San Francisco. Um, but I'll give you a little bit of my history. So I was born in Israel. When I was four, my family immigrated to Sydney, Australia. When I was 21, I moved to Jakarta, Indonesia. When I was 23, I moved to Mumbai, India. When I was 26, I moved to Tel Aviv, Israel. And about six years ago, I moved to California. Hence the completely messed up accent. Um, and to couple that, I, when I moved to Australia, I lived in a suburb called um, St. Ives, which was otherwise known as St. Africa. So I, my, all of my English teachers were South African. Uh, so I, I have no idea what time it is. Uh, I did wake up at 3.45 this morning to get here, and straight after here on, our way, on my way to um, San Francisco and then San Diego, where we're filming a TV show right now. And what's funny is that this is freaking me out a little bit because I've got a microphone on and for the past two weeks I've been in front of a camera. And it's a bit of a businessy type of a reality TV show that's gonna come out in the next few months. And what's weird is going home and knowing that everything the past week's been recorded and can be used against you is when I speak to my wife, I now feel for a microphone. Uh, but one thing that I wanted to the reason why I'm here is really to share with you a little bit about our story. Um, so, go uh, now. I'm. Let's assume I'm now living in Israel. Um, I was 28 years old at the time. I just met my wife, and we were leading the typical Tel Aviv 28-year-old hedonistic lifestyle. We would wake up at 8:30 in the morning. We would go to work. Um, we would work damn hard. We would then go home, change, play beach volleyball at about 5.30 in the afternoon, go home, have a siesta, wake up at about 8.30, go out for dinner, party till about 3.34 in the morning, and repeat that daily. This was a typical day for us. And we wanted to, and as part of when I met my wife, 
we wanted to not only lead that life, but we wanted to have a healthy life. So we went to our local supermarket and saw the natural beauty product department. And when we looked at that department, all the products there were good products. None of them were bad, but none of them appealed to me. And I think this will relate to a lot of the customers that you're looking at achieving. None of all of them were what I call the IBMs of the natural beauty world. They weren't particularly exciting. They did a job, but they weren't emotionally connecting to me. Here I was at the time being a mini driving, virgin flying, Apple using individual. And none of those products spoke to me in the same language that they did. So we said, why don't we create a natural beauty brand that was founded on one key premise, the word yes. All the other brands at the time were saying, no, don't do this, don't do that, the others are bad. And I didn't want to do that because there were certain products in my regimen that I refused to give up. I'm the founder of what is now the second largest natural beauty brand in the US. And the antiperspirant that I'm wearing right now is clinically proven to be killing me. <laughs> clinically proven. I know that every time I put it on, I am taking hours off my life. But I would prefer to stand next to this lovely woman and not have her run away from me. Because I am a short, relatively hairy Israeli man, and I perspire. And none of the natu natural products have worked for me up until this point. So we created a brand called Yes2. Yes2 um, started off with Yes to Carrots, hence the title Chief Carrot Lover. And Yes to Carrots is a completely stupid name for a beauty brand. But what it did do was that it made people smile. When somebody saw the name Yes to Carrots, they went, ah, oh, what is this? And it encouraged them to look in. The other thing we did which no other brand was doing at the time. For example, in our first shampoo, we had specific directions, very important ones. Shampoo daily on wet hair while singing. And it was amazing how many emails we started to get back saying, dear yes to love your shampoo, by the way, it works if you don't sing. And, but what that did more than anything was it created a connection between us a brand that made body butter and hand soap no different to any other body butter and hand soap on the market. It was good. You know, we thought it was brilliant, but in the end of the day, anybody can make body butter or hand soap. There are thousands of factories that do that. But what we wanted to do was establish a relationship, a connection. Everything that we wanted to do from day one, whether it was the product or whether it was the way we went to market, was all about relationship. So, we started this product, we went with six products in 16 stores. Now, as very smart business people, we said, what's a good natural progression from six products in 16 stores for us to grow into? How can we learn? How can we not you know, do something stupid and go way too fast or way too big? And we were six products in 16 stores in Israel, and we said, you know, what's the natural progression? We said, well, why don't we go to a chain called Walgreens? Only 5,800 stores. We can do that. Our factory was about the size of this stage. We, we can do that, no problem. So I got on a plane, and through a, a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend, got a meeting with a lovely woman by the name of Michelle, who was, at the time, the head of business development in the beauty set at Walgreens. And I flew all the way for what was meant to be a 30-minute meeting. Now, I walked downstairs to that meeting of oh, the, the beautiful Marriott Suites in Deerfield, Illinois. And I am wearing, I'm saying that facetiously, sarcastically, it is not beautiful, nor is it grand. Um, and nor do I think I had a suite. Um, but the, I was wearing my best $199 suit, no tie. And I walked downstairs and the person who was picking me up, Ralph, looks at me and goes, Ido, you cannot wear that to Walgreens. What do you mean? He goes, well, you need a tie. 
went, oh God, okay. So we raced to, the, to a Neiman Marcus around the corner and in the corner of my eye, I saw the most hideous orange tie on the planet. When I say hideous, it was, if I hadn't bought it, they would have given it to me. And I put on this tie and said, you know what, I'm the carrot guy, I need an orange tie. And I'll get back to orange in a minute. But I walked into the Walgreens headquarters with this hideous orange tie, and I could see in the background people sitting at the tables. Everybody had a name tag. Kellogg's, Unilever, Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson. And here I was, yes to carrots. <laughs> what the hell is this guy doing here? I'm looking at them, they're looking at me. And the, and the following story, had it not happened, I swear to God, I would not be standing here on the stage. The next three minutes that I'm about to share with you was the most game-changing moment for myself and my family and my team's life. And to illustrate that, I need you. What is your, yep, beautiful blue jacket. What is your name? Sorry, what is your name? Can you please join me up on stage? Everybody give her a big round of applause. Okay. Understand if you ever come to see me speak again, never sit at that table. Now, okay. So, Kamar. What a beautiful name. Wow, I love that name. I've got three girls. If I have another one, Kamar will be on my short list. Okay. <laughs> My wife is, let, is more likely to let me have a mistress than she is to let me have a fourth child. I want to put that very quickly. Uh, now, now, I need, now Kamar, I need you to stand here. Kamar, do you know how to juggle? Okay, good. Okay, I'm going to throw this at you. No, I'm not throwing it at you. Now, so I want you to imagine we are now in Deerfield, Illinois, Walgreens corporate headquarters. And Kamar is Michelle. Michelle is a Midwestern, beautiful woman, actually dressed very similar to Kamar, but with a, with a, with a, actually a black suit on. And I'm, I can see Michelle walking towards me. And I don't know if any of you have ever had this experience happen to you before, but as Michelle is walking towards me, I can see in Michelle's eyes that if, because she was doing a favor to somebody here, that if she can get out of this meeting in 18 minutes, it's a win for her. She does not want to have this meeting. She's meeting this guy from a company called Yes to Carrots. Stupid, stupid idea for even accepting the meeting in the first place. But so Michelle's walking towards me and she's got her hand out. It's her hand out. And pause. Now, she's walking briskly. She wants to get me in and out of the Deerfield headquarters of Walgreens. Now, as this happens, my heart is pounding at a million miles an hour. And I am, you know, I'm Australian. I want to swear, but I really can't in front of this audience because you look all so nice people. I am, I am essing myself. And... Um, and, and literally, we are, um, as I'm walking towards her, everything slows down. And I don't know what I, why I did what I did, but th th as I said, this particular thing changed the trajectory of my life. And this is what happened. So Michelle put her hand out, she's walking towards me. I moved Michelle's hand out of the way. I leaned in. I gave her a big hug. I gave her a kiss on both cheeks. And I said, Michelle, this is how we do it in Israel. The good way. Give her a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, in this instance, I learned two lessons. Firstly, there's nothing Midwestern women love more than intimate contact with strangers. <laughs> but the second thing I learned was that this changed her and her, the way she was approaching this meeting. 
Because all of a sudden, the first 30-minute meeting, I threw her off her game. She was in to get me in, out, in, out, boom. Never talk to me again. That was her goal. And what ended up happening was that Michelle turned to me and said, tell me about your life. Why are you here? And we, I told her about this beautiful girl that I had just met and that I was going to propose to. I told her about Israel and where I was living and India and Indonesia. And she told me about her dreams and her kids and her family. And that first 30-minute meeting of the, fir- the 30 minutes, the first 30 minutes of what was meant to be a 30-minute meeting was about becoming friends. We built a relationship. You guys have this opportunity better than any other financial institution in institutions on the planet. You really do. You have it without any doubt. The most, the, that's your biggest, forget everything else, that is your number one reason why Anna Pickren, my chief of staff, is a member of the Delta Credit Union since she was 10 years old and will always be. That's the reason. And I can tell you that that minute, or that second of kissing Michelle, resulted in us not necessarily getting the business, but getting a foot in the door. By getting her to understand that we were more than just a product, more than just a widget, more than just a hand lotion, but we were people. And that, we were, and that every decision that she was going to make from that minute on didn't just affect a company, but affected the people within the company and the vision that we had for it, which was to create a brand that not only gave back by giving people a choice about what products they could use, and much like Darcy said before, products that don't actually harm you, but make you better, but it was also going to help the community at large. So I took a long story short, Michelle ended up saying yes, we got an online trial, we went, then went um, and rolled from six products in 16 stores to 5,800 stores, we then rolled from one shelf to four shelves, etc. And today, yes, two is sold in more than 30,000 locations throughout the world um, and is the number two natural beauty brand in the US. And it all started with a, with a kiss. Now. My wife will tell you that's how we got to three children, but it's, it's a whole thing. Uh, now, so that's Yes2. Yes2 is an amazing company, and I had an amazing time founding it and continue to, to love my company. But what I decided was that we had built a pretty cool model here, and I wanted to see whether we could duplicate that model. So... Yes, too, while it's still our company, has an incredible management team that runs it day to day. I'm still there every week, but we just, myself and my co-founder Lance developed this model based on three key principles that I think you guys should apply to your business. And if you can indulge me, I, I highly recommend you write it down. It's really simple. The three pillars are incredible people, kick-ass product, and awesome cause. Incredible people means every single person in my organization needs to reflect the values of the organization. And by reflecting it means being a part of its evolution. Because God knows not everything that I say needs to be gospel in the organizations that we create. So we want to have people in the company that will do whatever it takes to make the dream a reality. Kick-ass product, because we live today in what we term a compromise-free generation. Somebody doesn't like it, they give it back, and worse, they tell every single human they know. Better yet, if they love it, you're made. I remember walking into Marketing 101 at the University of Technology in Sydney, and the first thing our lecturer said was, I'm going to teach you one thing. And if I teach you this one thing in the first five minutes, you don't need to attend any other lecture that I give you. Word of mouth. 
the most valuable marketing in the world. And today, through social media, obviously, we have that amplified more than any other time in history. And the third one, awesome cause, because why the hell not? Every single company that we build, the cause is built into the business model. And unlike some of my fellow friends in Silicon Valley, our companies are profitable. We build companies that generate cash flow positive returns to its shareholders and its stakeholders year on year. And cause is built into that model, no matter what. And funnily enough, cause ends up becoming a marketing tool. Somebody asked me a few months ago whether cause was something that I thought was a good marketing scheme. And I said, hell yeah, I wish we could do more of it. Because the more you talk about cause, the more we sell. And as long as you're transparent, and as long as you actually do the good, magic happens. So while walking down the aisle of, a super, of, a, of one of the mass chains, I saw an area where my kids were ignoring, and that was school supplies. I'd walk into the school supplies aisle, and my kids thought, went past it like it didn't exist. And for some reason, innovation in school supplies ended sometime in 1986. And... You know, my six-year-old, who's very creative, ignored it. So we ended up deciding that we wanted to create a brand that brought creativity back to the school supplies aisle. Now, through my work with the Yes2 Seed Fund, we see a lot of public schools in this country, some of which that if I took you and blindfolded you and put you on a plane for seven hours and flew you around and landed and asked you where you were, you would probably tell me that you're in somewhere like Haiti. Yet these schools that we were visiting were 15 minutes to an hour away from my office. So when we asked teachers what was going on, they started to tell us that they were spending $496 on average a year out of their own pocket on school supplies for their classrooms. Some, school, some classrooms looked like Wonderland, some looked like a DMV waiting room. So we said we've got to solve this problem. We teamed up with some of our friends at the White House, the Department of Education, did a, did a bit of research and got incredible people together. I met this one guy, Justin Wolf in a bar, corporate lawyer, earning tons of money per hour. And I said to just told Justin about the dream that we wanted to create a brand that for every item you buy, we'll provide another item to a classroom here in the US. Before I even told him about the product category, he goes, Ido, I just quit my law firm eight seconds ago. When can I start? Justin today is the chief giving officer for Yubi. This is Yubi. Yubi is a school supplies line that not only looks good, but actually makes a mega difference. So let's play the first video, and you can see what it's about. Every year, teachers spend tons of their own money on stuff for their students. That's a big problem. UB wants to fix it. UB's dream is that students have what they need. Every student at every school because when kids have the basic things they need in class, school is more fun. And they do better in class. Here's how you can help. When you buy a UB school supply, you help UB give a box of pencils, crayons, or another cool UB item to a school in need. A school like mine. And all you have to do is choose UB. You buy, you be gives. It's that easy. One for you, one for me. It's really simple. A simple model. Kick-ass product, awesome cause, incredible people. And by the way, these products don't cost more than the other brands. We partner with an incredible organization like Target and the Kids in Need Foundation to make sure that we can actually get it out there. We partnered with an organization called the Starlight Foundation, so at every single hospital where there's chronically ill kids, 
they'll get free school supplies with Ubi. Our goal over the next three years is to not just make a dent in the problem, but to eradicate the problem. Over 750,000 kids in the first 12 months of UB's existence have received free school supplies. It's a tool that the studies show will change their learning exponentially. These are kids that their parents could not afford to buy crayons or folders to send with their children to school. It was a choice between food or crayons. And this exists here in Colorado Springs, in Denver, throughout this entire country, in your communities. Now, if I'm you, I'm thinking to myself, how do I become a UB? Now, you might think, oh, UB, yes to all of these companies. These are now bigger companies. Okay, we've got tens of millions of sales. We've got these big organizations. UB has less than 20 people. Yes to has less than 50. What we are and what you guys are are speedboats. It's why people, it's why we can do things quicker than others. One thing that I sensed after talking to some of you and having done it, doing a little bit of research and actually visiting some of you is that I think at times you might forget that you are a speedboat. It's one of the things that gives you the advantage across any major bank in this country or any other financial institution. Each of you as individuals are speedboats and together you make a squadron of jets. I would be forming formations left, right and center to figure out the fastest way to attack each and every one of the issues that you think you face. Because today, those decisions are not that hard. The communities that, you know, I even told this to these guys on the call. I remember the first financial institution to come to my school in Sydney, Australia, when I was six years old, was a credit union. My first bank, my first account, financial account, was at the credit union. They were the ones that came to my school. They were the ones that the teachers used. They were the ones that we ended up using. And my mum, who was a school teacher, that was the one that gave us the first loan to buy our first house. You guys are in the communities. We're about to test something new with UB, and I challenge you guys and if anybody wants to even partner with us on it, because we're going to be in a town near you very soon, we're opening up the first UB retail store in 30 days. 30 days from now, the first UB re standalone retail store will be open. Today, we're available in every single Target store. There's about 150 products in every single Target. Opening in the ne next 30 days will be the first UB store with about 450 products in it. Now, here's the thing that's different. Every time you buy an item inside a UB store, the donation will be given within a 10-mile radius of that store. Big, hopefully, this big idea will be able to get into local communities throughout the country fast. We're probably going to open my guess by this time next year, there will be at least 20 of them. Every time you buy, a local school will receive a donation. Think of all the local organizations, local businesses, small businesses. This TV show that I'm working on actually right now, that I'm filming right now, is with somebody who actually randomly spoke here last year, Randy Zuckerberg. Randy, one of my closest friends, who I'm actually now basically living with. Um, we're try part of our goal is to inspire millennial entrepreneurs to get into business. Whether it's in the tech world, whether they've come up with a widget, it doesn't matter. The first place that they should be considering going is you. 
if for no other reason that you can probably offer them a better rate than anybody else. The question is, can you work quicker than anybody else? Because I know that when Anna, my chief of staff, walks into her branch in Atlanta, the people there know her by name. I walk into my branch, the people there literally appear as though they've never seen me before. I'm telling you, you have such a competitive advantage across getting to know people, looking them in the eye, and showing them that you are not a financial institution, but you are a group of people who want to get to know them. As such, you can also give back to the community by walking into the community. If you guys don't have somebody whose core job it is to literally be a, almost like a politician and knock on doors every single day asking the community what you can do for them, hire that person this afternoon. This is a person that should be walking out and literally walking side by side and saying, excuse me, ma'am, how can I help you in your community? And then getting that answer, moving to the next one, moving to the next one. We live in a world today where retailers, institutions, companies are trying to figure out ways to make the space in which they have viable, a, a community zone. There are retailers out there now that are providing free yoga classes inside their retail footprint. If you have a retail footprint, figure out how you can loan that footprint to community organizations to use to come to you. How do you make a credit union or an organization such as yours an experiential place for people to visit? With one key question, how can we help you? Because if you can show them that you care, it doesn't matter whether you're 18, 35, or 75, people will respond to that. Where you will fail in this approach is if you don't act on their needs fast enough. And I bet you that the average decision-making tree of most of your organizations is about 100 times shorter than your closest financial institution that sits in the same wall as you. Act like a speedboat and let them act like aircraft carriers. Because I can tell you that as a brand like mine, across all my different brands, and this is two of them, we have a new one that just launched called Cheeky. Check it out, Cheeky Home. Cheeky Home is disposable paper plates and cups and cutlery with a mission. Every time you buy a packet of these items, we provide a meal to somebody here in the US. This is a company that's been around for less than six months and has already provided more than two million meals. Two million. How many people work at Cheeky? Five. Five people work at Cheeky. Two million meals, five people. We're about to hire the sixth one, we're going big. <laughs> Currently, and I've used Target as an example, across my companies we have over 300 products. Each one with a core mission to fundamentally make people's lives happier, providing them with a kick-ass product and an awesome, awesome cause. There are 6,700 of you approximately, 101 million constituents, customers, 101 million people that give a damn about your existence because they own you. How many of them feel that they can shape you as well? How many of them feel that you guys are coming to them and to asking them? very different from me being a shareholder of a bank. I am a shareholder of multiple banks, actually. None of which has ever asked me, how can I help you, and looked me in the eye. How can I help your community? How can I help your school? How can I help 
your children achieve their goals? Can you guys look them in the eye? Yes or no? Are you effing kidding me? Yes or no? Yes. Can you really look them in the eye? Do you know your customers better than the, the institution on the other side of the mall does? Yes or no? Yes. You better know. And if you don't know, you're not going to exist. Because you guys are special that you are a speedboat. You guys are there, and I can tell you, and I'm using this example of one, when I asked Anna, my chief of staff, one of the sweetest, most incredible women that has ever worked with me, why she uses Delta Credit Union, she goes, because every time they pick up the phone, before I even need to say anything, they know who I am. And I know that they care about me. And whether it was my first car, whether it was my college, whether it, whatever it was, these people took care of me. And as such, they will take care of my family and my family's needs going forward. Because the impact you guys can have is great. So the video that I'm going to show you right now is a video that we took of us visiting a school. Just a, This is in LA, a school where, where all the kids that you see here, some of which do not know when their next meal is going to come. And it's incredible that when you do something tiny and small for them, what a massive impact it can have. It's just mind-blowing. Let's watch the next video. Hi, I'm Ido, the co-founder of UB. We're at Doris Place Elementary School for the first ever UB Classroom Pack Give. UB was founded to solve two major problems. We wanted to make school supplies awesome and fun again. And secondly, we wanted to make sure that kids here in the US could have a level playing field no matter where they came from. As classroom teachers, we're always supplementing, you know, extra markers, extra, like the things that really make the classroom experience special. The average teacher spends $500 out of her own pocket on school supplies for her classroom. That's $1.6 billion a year of teacher salaries. There had to be a better way. For children who struggle in so many areas of their lives, it's not just a gift of a pencil and an eraser, it's a gift of confidence. Sometimes my mom can't get the supplies for school. UB is really good because it's helping kids like me. Every time you buy a UB item, UB will donate an item into a UB classroom pack. Once we fill up one of those packs, UB ships that to a classroom right here in the US, providing those kids with school supplies immediately. When UB came into our classroom, students were really excited. I think they felt that you know, UB was really caring for them and wanting them to be creative. They gave them like a free period where they could draw and explore with their new materials. They were really excited about the brand new pencil sharpeners. <laughs> Two, three. Ah! Our goal is that every school here in the U.S. is a bright and happy place to be. Maybe one for you, one for me. One for you and one for me. You be means one for you and one for me, and it's very fair. You be awesome, you be great, you be you. You be is for everybody. That's you. So, yeah. So, you know, I want to leave you guys with just one thing. You know, the, uh, but, and, uh, and, a, and a question, if anybody from the room is from the area. The first UB store is going to be in the Santa Anita Mall just outside of Pasadena. That's our first test store. If any of you come from a credit union near there, Tell me, I'll bank with you, and we'll support the local schools together. Um, but I want to leave you with one thing. You know what? All of your organizations have been around for varying stages of time. But if you think of your company or of your credit union as though you were starting it today for the very first time, that it was a startup. And there was only your core leadership team that's here in the room today. And if you could write on a post-it note 
all of your ideas and put them up on a wall, what would you do? What would you do differently? How would you tackle that challenge? Try that exercise, because I'm telling you, it's fun to be a startup. It's dangerous to be a startup. The exhilaration that comes with it makes your team feel exhilarated. And I suggest you go through that exercise because it's a hell of a lot of fun. And with that, I thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, Ido, thank you. We will have much more from Ido as we, uh, as we go into... Oh, wait a minute. I, I wanna... <laughs> Oh, that's a good hugger. Thank you.